Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model T16 floor scrubber. With proper use and care, your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems will perform well for many years to come. This operator training video will help you better understand how to prepare your machine for use, scrub your floors, and care for your machine so you get the longest life and best performance from your floor scrubber. Safety. It is the operator's responsibility to operate the machine safely. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. How the scrubbing systems work. Your machine can effectively scrub dirty floors. The one-step scrub button makes it possible to immediately begin scrubbing with the activation of a single button. As the machine travels forward, the desired amount of water and detergent is automatically regulated and distributed to the floor. The brushes use the detergent and water solution to scrub the floor clean. When traveling forward, the squeegee wipes the dirty solution from the floor, while the scrub vacuum fan draws the dirty solution collected by the squeegee off of the floor and into the recovery tank. Controls and Instrumentation an on-off key switch is used to control machine power. Turn the key to the right to turn the machine's power on and to the left to turn it off. The directional switch controls the forward or reverse direction of the machine. Place the switch in the forward position to propel forward and the reverse position to propel in reverse. The operating lights are controlled by the light switch. Place the switch in the middle position to turn on the operating lights. Press the top of the switch to turn on the operating lights and the optional safety lights. Press the bottom of the switch to turn off all lights. If your machine is equipped with the optional pre-sweep system, this switch controls the dust control vacuum fan and the brushes. Place the switch in the middle position to turn on the pre-sweep brushes. Press the top of the switch to turn on the brushes and dust control. Press the bottom of the switch to turn off all pre-sweep systems. The power kill switch stops all power to the machine. Press the switch to stop the machine power. To restart the machine, turn the power kill switch to the right and release it. Then cycle the key switch off and then on again. Note: The power kill switch should only be used in case of an emergency. It must not be used for normal stopping while the machine is moving, as this may damage the machine. To the right of the steering wheel is a control panel. If your machine is equipped with the optional right side scrub brush, this switch controls the position of the scrub brush and the motor. To lower the side scrub brush and turn it on, press the top of the switch. To raise the side scrub brush and turn it off, press the bottom of the switch. If your machine is equipped with a spray nozzle, this switch turns on the water supply. To turn on the spray nozzle water supply, press the top of the switch. Next, pull the spray nozzle from the back of the machine and clean as required. When you are finished cleaning, turn off the spray nozzle by pressing the bottom of the switch and then gently tug the spray nozzle hose and allow the hose to retract into the machine. The steering wheel controls the machine travel path. Most of the scrubbing functions are controlled by the operator using the control module in the center of the steering wheel. The horn is controlled by a half ring button at the top of the control module. Pressing anywhere on the button will sound the horn. In the center below the horn ring is a warning indicator. In certain conditions, the warning indicator will turn on and a message that describes the condition will be displayed in the window below the indicator. You may be required to stop the machine and follow your company's service procedure guidelines to correct the condition. This display window is also used to indicate the battery charge level, hour meter reading, the solution level, and the recovery tank level. The battery discharge indicator displays the charge level of the batteries while the machine is operating. When the batteries are fully charged, all five bars are lit. Recharge the batteries when there are no longer any bars showing in the display. The hour meter records the hours the machine has been operated. 
Use this information to determine machine service intervals. The solution tank indicator displays the amount of liquid in the solution tank. Refill the solution tank when there are no longer any bars shown in the display. The recovery tank indicator displays the percentage of liquid in the recovery tank. Empty the recovery tank when the indicator reaches 100%. The display contrast can be easily adjusted. Each time the contrast button is pressed and released, the contrast will darken in the LCD display. Once the display reaches the darkest setting, pressing and releasing the button again will increase the display to the brightest setting. The Supervisor Control button is used to access the configuration and diagnostic modes. Only properly trained service personnel should access these modes. The large green button in the center of the control module is the one-step scrub button. Pressing this button turns on all scrubbing systems that were active the last time the machine was used. Note. There may be a short delay before all scrubbing systems are activated and the indicator light turns on. Pressing the button again turns off all scrubbing systems. When the one step button is pressed to stop scrubbing, the machine remembers which scrub settings were active. When the one step button is pressed to start scrubbing again, the machine will return to those settings. To allow the cleaning solution to remain on the floor and improve your cleaning results, you can raise the rear squeegee and turn off the vacuum fan by pressing the squeegee button. Pressing the squeegee button again will lower the squeegee to the working position and turn on the vacuum fan so you can recover the solution. While scrubbing, the brush pressure and the solution flow rate should be adjusted to provide the desired cleaning results. When only the bottom brush pressure LED is lit, the brush pressure is set to the lowest setting. To increase the brush pressure, press and release the button to move to the next higher setting. The solution flow rate is adjusted with the solution decrease minus button and the solution increase plus button at the bottom of the control module. Under normal cleaning conditions, the brush pressure and solution flow rate should be set to the minimum settings required to clean the floor. Note. Travel speed and floor conditions will also affect cleaning performance. When the one-step button is pressed to stop scrubbing, the machine remembers the active settings. When the one-step button is pressed to start scrubbing again, the machine returns to those settings. The Scrub Mode button controls optional scrubbing solution systems, including the Extended Scrub System, or ES, Foam Scrubbing Technology, or FAST, and Electrically Converted Water, or ECH2O. With this button inactive, the machine operates in conventional mode. On the lower left and lower right portions of the control module are buttons that turn the water flow on and off. When approaching a turn while scrubbing, the solution flow should be turned off and then back on again when exiting the turn. The machine's propel speed is controlled by a foot pedal. Press down on the pedal to increase propel speed and release the pedal to decrease speed. The brake pedal slows and stops the machine. Depress the brake pedal to stop the machine. When the machine comes to a stop, the parking brake automatically turns on. When you press the propel pedal again, it releases. Prior to operating the machine, there are checks that need to be completed to make sure your machine is ready to clean. Check the battery charge level. Check the operating lights. Check the right side squeegee for wear and damage. Check the left side squeegee for wear and damage. Check brushes for wear and damage. Remove any wire, string, or twine that may have become wrapped around the scrub brushes. Check the rear squeegees for wear and damage. Check the solution and recovery tank cover seals for wear or damage. Confirm that the vacuum fan inlet filter is clean. Then remove the debris tray, empty it, and wash it out. If your machine is equipped with the fast scrubbing technology, confirm the fast pack is not empty. Refer to the operator's manual for fast pack changing procedures. 
For fast or ECH2O scrubbing, confirm all conventional cleaning agents are drained and rinsed from the solution tank. Also for the fast and ECH2O technologies, confirm the solution tank is filled with clear cool water only. If your machine is equipped with a pre-sweep option, check for wire, string or twine that may have become wrapped around the brushes. Confirm the dust filter bag is not full and the debris trough is empty. Check maintenance records to determine maintenance requirements. Preparing your machine to scrub. Open the solution tank fill cover. Partially fill the solution tank with water, not to exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour the required amount of detergent into the solution tank. Attention! Only use recommended cleaning detergents. Machine damage due to improper detergent usage will void the manufacturer's warranty. Fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. Next, turn the key switch on, press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. Optional Scrubbing Technologies If your machine is equipped with an optional scrubbing technology, like ES, FAST, or ECH2O, preparations will vary depending on the scrubbing technology used. Optional ES Mode The Extended Scrub, or ES Mode, provides an economical method for scrubbing floors. The ES system recycles recovered solution from the recovery tank through a filtration system and transfers it back into the solution tank for reuse. As the solution is reused, detergent is injected into the solution to maintain a consistent concentration and improve cleaning ability. To use the ES technology, fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab and fill the recovery tank half full. Note. The water temperature must not exceed 60 degrees centigrade or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Fill the ES detergent tank with the recommended detergent and install the cap. Warning! Do not use flammable materials in the detergent tank. Next, turn on the key switch. Then, press the ES switch to enable the technology. Next, press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. Optional FAST mode. FAST scrubbing technology offers the advantages of using less water and detergent than conventional scrubbing. Unlike conventional scrubbing, the optional foam scrubbing technology, or FAST mode, operates by injecting the fast pack detergent concentrate into the system with a small amount of water and air. To use this technology, fill the solution tank with clean, cool water only. The water temperature should not exceed 21 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents or a fast system failure may result. Fill the solution tank with water until the level is just below the indicator tab. Warning! Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. Next, turn on the key switch. Then, press the fast switch to enable the technology. Next, Press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. Optional ECH2O mode. ECH2O is a technology that electrically converts plain tap water into a cleaner without chemicals. If your machine is equipped with the ECH2O technology, you will see the ECH2O logo on the side of the machine. To use this technology, fill the solution tank with clean, cool water only. The water temperature should not exceed 21 degrees centigrade or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use hot water or add any conventional floor cleaning detergents or an ECH2O system failure may result. Next, turn on the key switch. Then, press the ECH2O switch to enable the technology. Next, press the large green one-step scrub button and start scrubbing. While scrubbing, Observe the ECH2O light on the control panel next to the switch. If you see a solid blue light, the ECH2O technology is functioning properly. If the ECH2O light is flashing red or is solid red, 
a fault message will appear in the display window. Refer to the operator's manual for more information and follow your company's service procedure guidelines. Main brush information. The amount and type of soilage play an important role in determining the type of brushes to use on your machine. For best results, use the correct brush or pad type for your cleaning application. Brush and pad application guidance is located in the operator's manual. Part numbers are located in the parts manual. When the brushes need replacing, always replace them in sets. To replace the disc brushes or pads, first raise the scrub head and turn off the key. Next, pull out and up on the squeegee mount assembly latch lever. Turn the lever counterclockwise and pull out on the assembly. Turn the brush until you can see the brush spring clip. Press the spring clip together with your thumb and index finger. The brush will drop off the brush drive hub. When using pads, attach the pad to the pad driver and secure the pad with the center lock before installing the pad driver on the machine. To install the pad driver or brush on your machine, align it with the motor hub and push it upward until it is engaged. When the spring clip snaps into place, confirm the brush is securely installed. Close the squeegee assembly and secure the latch lever. Changing cylindrical brushes. To change cylindrical brushes, first raise the scrub head from the floor and turn the key off. Next, pull out and up on the squeegee mount assembly lever. Turn the lever counterclockwise and swing the squeegee assembly out of the way. Remove the idler plate from the scrub head. Remove the brush from the scrub head by pulling outward on the brush. Slide the brush onto the drive plug on the scrub head and secure the idler plate. Close the squeegee assembly and secure the latch lever. Follow the same procedure on the other side of the machine to replace the other scrub brush. The optional side brush provides a wider scrubbing path and allows you to clean next to walls and racks. To change the side brush, first stop the machine, raise the side brush, set the parking brake and turn off the machine. Next, manually spin the brush until the spring handles are visible and then squeeze the spring handles to release the brush. Place the new side brush underneath the side brush assembly and lift the side brush up onto the side brush hub until the brush locks onto the hub. Rotating or changing the rear squeegees. When the blades become worn, simply rotate them end for end or top to bottom to use a new wiping edge. Replace the squeegee blades when all the edges are worn. First, Remove the vacuum hose and then lower the two retainer levers and pull the squeegee frame from the machine. Next, loosen the squeegee band latch and remove the band from the assembly. While holding the rubber grommets away from the frame, slide the inside squeegee frame away from the outer frame. Install the new front squeegee blade or rotate the existing blade to a new edge. Reinstall the inner squeegee frame on the outer frame. Install the rotated or new rear squeegee. And then install and secure the squeegee band. Next, install the squeegee frame on the machine and reattach the vacuum hose. Changing the side squeegees. With the machine stopped on a level surface, turn off the machine. Unlatch the side squeegee retaining band. Remove the retaining band from the side squeegee assembly. 
Pull the old squeegee from the squeegee frame assembly and rotate it to an unworn edge or replace it when all four edges are worn. Reinstall the side squeegee retaining band by hooking the front of the band on the front of the side squeegee frame. Then place it on the side squeegee and secure the retaining latch. Changing the side brush squeegee. For better access to the side brush squeegee, Start the scrubbing systems with the side brush activated. After the side brush has extended, turn off the key. Release the squeegee band latch and swing the band outward. This provides access to the squeegees in the backup strip. Rotate each squeegee to new edges, or replace them when all of the edges are worn. Reinstall the band and secure the latch. Cleaning with your machine. Before scrubbing with your machine, manually pick up oversized debris, wire, string, twine, or any other debris that could become wrapped around or tangled in the brushes. Press the one-step scrub button to start scrubbing. If necessary, set the scrub mode and settings for the area being cleaned. Press the propel pedal to begin scrubbing. For safety, drive slowly on inclines and slippery surfaces. When operating in reverse, the rear squeegee will raise to prevent damaging the squeegee. When traveling in forward again, all scrubbing systems will turn back on. To stop the machine, release the propel pedal and press the brake pedal. As the machine stops, the scrubbing systems will stop. They will begin again when you resume propelling. To stop scrubbing, press the one-step scrub button. The light next to the one-step scrub button will go off and all scrubbing functions will stop after a short delay. When your cleaning is finished, the machine needs to be emptied and cleaned. For safety, before leaving or servicing the machine, stop on a level surface and turn the machine off. Place the recovery tank drain hose next to a floor drain. The drain hose has an adjustable flow drain cuff to manage the flow rate during draining. By slowly turning the drain cuff to the first notch, the flow rate is controlled to reduce splashing. Continuing to rotate the drain cuff will increase the flow rate. Removing the cuff will allow full flow. Lift the recovery tank cover and secure the cover brace. Then remove the debris tray, empty it and wash it out. Next, use water to clean the recovery tank. While rinsing the recovery tank, also rinse off the float sensors. Do not use steam to clean the tanks because excessive heat can damage the tanks and other components. Warning! Flammable materials can cause an explosion or fire. Do not use flammable materials in the tanks. Check the vacuum fan inlet filter daily. Clean the inlet filter with a damp cloth or hose when it is dirty. Allow the filter to dry completely before reinstalling it. If your machine is equipped with the ES option, also clean the ES filter. If your machine is equipped with the ES option and it has been used, you will also need to clean the solution tank. The solution tank drain hose manages solution flow rate with the same type of drain cuff as the one used on the recovery tank hose. Clean the solution tank with water. Once the machine is clean, close the drain cuffs and hook the hoses onto the machine. The optional pre-sweep assembly is mounted to the front of the machine and provides added ability to pick up debris and control dust. The assembly contains a main brush and a side brush, or brushes, which sweep debris into a hopper. Periodically empty the hopper as it fills with debris. A vacuum fan draws air from the brush compartment through a filter bag to control dust. Check the vacuum filter bag each day and replace the bag if it is either full or damaged. Charging the batteries. To prolong the life of the batteries, recharge them only if the machine was used for a total of 30 minutes or more. Do not leave batteries discharged for lengthy periods. 
To charge the batteries, first transport the machine to a well-ventilated area. Park the machine on a flat, dry surface. Turn the key off. Some batteries are sealed and do not require any maintenance. On this type of battery, the cap should not be removed. If you are charging wet batteries, lead-acid batteries, the fluid level should be checked before charging the batteries. The fluid should be at the level shown. If the battery fluid level is too low, damage to the battery will result. If the battery fluid level is too high, the fluid may overflow while charging. Warning! Fire or explosion hazard. Batteries emit hydrogen gas. Keep sparks and open flame away. If your machine is equipped with an off-board charger, you will need to connect the charger's DC cord to the machine's battery receptacle. If your machine is equipped with either the onboard or off-board charger, the next step is to plug the charger's AC power cord into a properly grounded receptacle. The supplied charger will automatically begin charging and shut off when fully charged. Attention! Do not disconnect the charger's DC cord from the machine's receptacle when the charger is operating because arcing may result. If the charger must be interrupted during charging, disconnect the AC power cord first. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments and following the proper operating procedures for your tenant floor scrubber will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment.